this individual asks a question about TURP uh, as an out, is it an outdated treatment? Um, TURP is an operation for benign prostatic hyperplasia um, and is rarely used in prostate cancer, but it does have a role. So sometimes men present with locally advanced prostate cancer, that's disease that's spread beyond the prostate, and they're really struggling to pee, and some of them will need a catheter. And in order to get rid of that catheter, we have to remove some of the tissue before the hormones uh, have the opportunity to shrink the um, prostate down. And that can help get rid of a catheter and get a man peeing again. And that's called a channel TURP. That's an unusual use of TURP, which stands for trans transurethral resection of the prostate. Uh, and it still has a very important role. Uh, its main use, and it's been around for 40, 50 years now, uh, maybe even longer, is to cut out a channel in the prostate to allow men to pee much better to empty their bladders um, when the prostate has indeed grown. Um, now, it's being surpassed, and hence the question, by many other treatments. Some of these are minimally invasive, um, and some of them do exactly the same as TURP, but use different technologies such as laser. And some of you will have heard of green light laser, some of you will have heard of homium laser prostatectomy. Um, these essentially do the same, but they do it uh, with a little bit, bit, little bit less bleeding and often a shorter hospital stay. And importantly, less absorption of the irrigation and the water that we use as part of the treatment. There's a growth in minimally invasive techniques for men with BPH, um, and these are of a number of types. Some are kind of pins to keep to kind of hang the prostate high to open things up. Um, there's a steam treatment uh, using vapor, uh, which, um, which destroys the cells. Um, there are new laser treatments in the prostate, uh, which are coming in now, which are fairly minimally invasive. Most of these minimally invasive forms of treatment work very well. They preserve ejaculation, uh, but they do need fairly long catheter times. So the catheter has to be in to allow the tissue that's been destroyed to, to be absorbed and the swelling to diminish so that when we take the catheter out, the individual can empty the bladder efficiently. Now there are men with prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is common, BPH is common, benign prostatic hyperplasia is common, and so there's a big overlap between the two. And sometimes we'll, we'll do the BPH treatment first before the cancer treatment. Sometimes we'll do the cancer treatment first um, and the BPH treatment afterwards. Uh, for instance, men who are waiting for radiotherapy, sometimes the radiotherapists will ask us to deal with the BPH first to get the bladder emptying efficiently so that they don't uh, run into problems during the uh, program of radiotherapy, uh, which might require a catheter and uh, make things a lot more complicated. But that's a kind of complicated uh, discussion that uh, we would have with the radiotherapists and, and obviously let the patient know of the options and the merits and benefits of um, doing one first versus one later. It's never usually completely clear cut uh, and is a very a kind of individualized form of treatment.